improve and they've got to keep at it uh, over the course of the day, night, and into tomorrow. Uh, thank you to all of the, the first responders out there doing your part and also to the residents. As I traveled in from the west into Boston, there's very few vehicles on the road. You've listened to the advice of the governor and others, and we really appreciate your continuing to do that so the work crews can get out there and do what they need to do to clear the roads and make them safe and passable for everyone. Uh, but we're not out of the woods yet. We uh, will continue to coordinate with our local partners, particularly uh, on the south shore, the Cape, and the south coast, a uh, harder hit area of our Commonwealth. Uh, as of noon today, nearly 30 communities have stood up local emergency operations centers to coordinate with MEMA. Uh, Ten local and regional shelters and five warming centers have opened in eastern and southeastern areas of the state. Uh, we'll continue to support the shelter needs as power is restored uh, both you know, during and, and through uh, out the, the end of this event. Uh, several coastal communities are experiencing minor and moderate flooding. We'll continue to monitor that. Uh, through the evening with a high tide uh, this evening. Local public safety officials are ready to assist residents and should be contacted directly for resources that are available to you in your city and town. If you have emergency needs, you obviously call 911. This winter storm recovery, as they always are, but this one in particular with the volume is messy and difficult work, and community officials are working around the clock, but they still need you to continue to stay at home, hunker down, uh, do your part in that way so that they can do their work for you. We can't st stress that enough. Uh, it's safer for everyone uh, for the work crews to be able to do their work without uh, obstructions <clears throat> in the road. Uh, they, the road conditions, as the governor outlined, continue to be hazardous for travel, and it's critical that everyone uh, do their part so that the crews have the time and space to do their work. Again, grateful. Uh, for the preparedness in our Commonwealth. Uh, as I said earlier, they are prepared, ready, and doing what they need to do for everyone. And uh, we will get through this weekend and work toward uh, a full recovery. Uh, with that, I would now like to turn it over to Secretary Tesler. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And thank you for joining us to get an update on the status of the storm in our operations. First, I want to uh, echo the appreciation that people have he heeded the warnings to avoid travel today. We are also extremely grateful to all of those who are at work during this severe storm, including the men and women at this Highway Operations Center, our plow drivers, the MBTA vehicle operations and entire team, members of the medical community, first responders, and others. The work you do contributes to our safety, and we appreciate uh, your dedication. As forecasted, this has been a very challenging storm. And with heavy snowfall rates, strong wind gusts, and very low visibility due to whiteout conditions on the roads, our crews involved in snow and ice operations have been on the job since last night. And because tonight, strong winds will continue to move the snow around, they will work into the day tomorrow. Late last night, MassDOT crews activated Late last night, MassDOT activated crews to begin spreading and plowing operations. And as the storm grew in intensity overnight, we continue to add to the number of pieces of equipment deployed in snow and ice operations. Highway, Minister, Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver will provide more specifics shortly. At this hour, there continues to be road hazards. So we emphasize that people should still stay home unless absolutely necessary to travel. We continue to encourage everyone to think of their safety and make smart decisions. MassDOT and the MBTA were well prepared for the storm and expect to have our crews working into the day on Sunday. General Manager Pofdak is here and will speak more to the MBTA's operation in a few moments. Massport continues to advise travelers flying to check with their airlines about Sunday flights, as some airlines have already postponed flights scheduled for tomorrow. The most important message we hope to convey to you now is everyone should continue to avoid travel unless necessary and be extremely cautious if you do have to be on the roads. Leave plenty of distance to let the crews do their job. And at this point, I'm going to turn it to uh, Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver. Thank you. 
Thank you, Secretary. And uh, to reiterate, I want to really thank all the men and women of MassDOT, our municipal partners, and our contractors who have been working diligently since last night and really preparing since earlier this week to keep our roadways safe. We have more than 3,000 pieces of snow and ice equipment deployed right now, and uh, they've been treating our roadways again since last night, and we expect that we've been keeping them on for some time. This storm has hit us in line with expectations and with forecasts. I cannot stress enough how hazardous roadway conditions have been throughout the day today. We have been seeing very heavy snow, wind, whiteout conditions in many areas today. Both MassDOT and cities and towns have had, had crews out throughout the storm struggling to keep up with the snowfall rates. We have had a number of issues related to the storm that have made it especially problematic, including flooded coastal roads, the rate of snowfall, and down power lines. Additionally, the type of snow that we have gotten is a very powdery one, and combined with the high winds has created a problem with snow drifts. Our interstates uh, are especially, stone, especially prone to developing snow drifts as are any other roadways that are in open areas where winds can develop quickly. We expect that drifting will continue to be problematic throughout this evening and into tomorrow morning. And the storm is also, again, going to require a long cleanup. And we expect that we will have a number of crews out for the next few days cleaning up roadways, pushing back snow banks, and widening out highway ramps, and generally just keeping on top of slippery areas. Uh, we do ask the public to please make sure that they clean off their vehicles before they do go out and travel. But bottom line, the public should expect to encounter slippery conditions well after the snow stops falling. And again, we really do appreciate the public staying home today and staying off the roadways and giving our crews the rooms to operate. So next, I'd like to introduce General Manager Steve Poftak to talk about the MBTA. Thank you, Administrator. Um, as I said yesterday, uh, today, uh, was going to be one of the most challenging days for the MBTA, and the day has surely delivered. Um, I think our primary, just to give an update on current conditions, our primary concern right now is, is buses, which are dependent on the roadways being reasonably clear of snow. And, uh, you know, I think our, our municipal and our state partners have put forward a tremendous effort in the face of extraordinary snowfall totals. Nevertheless, we do have a number of buses that are stuck. We have crews uh, that are working with them, uh, working to, to free those buses. We have approximately 20 to 25 buses that are stuck. We have, um, we have suspended five routes, the 211, the 215, the 220, the 712, and the 713, where conditions are unsafe for us to currently operate. Um, we are also running snow routes on a number of routes. Again, I encourage you to look at mbta.com for additional information on how your bus, may, bus route may have been affected by this. We've also seen effects on commuter rail, particularly in those areas that have gotten the most intense areas of snowfall. Uh, in particular, the old colony lines have been affected. Uh, we put in place a speed restriction on those lines. Uh, which has obviously caused delays in service. Again, encourage you to check MBT, mbta.com to learn about the, any impact on your particular train. Um, our subways in general carried quite well throughout the day. We did uh, encounter a number of impediments, uh, including three cars uh, that blocked the B branch at various times throughout the day. Again, I encourage folks um, to continue to heed the governor's words and stay off the roads at least for today. Now as we turn our attention to tomorrow, we turn our work from snow clearing and snow plowing to snow removal. And I want to, um, I want to express my thanks uh, to all of our customers for their patience. Tomorrow I encourage you to continue to check MBT, mbta.com for any information about schedule changes. Leave extra time for your journey and use caution when you are outside as we are still working uh, both in our stations but also in the paths of travel to and from those stations to clear them, as, uh, clear them of snow. We will continue to bus the Mattapan line tomorrow and we will continue to bus the D branch of the Green Line tomorrow as we continue our efforts to remove snow. We expect that we will be resuming the Charlestown Ferry 
but again, encourage you to check the website for the latest information on your particular journey. I want to close, uh, as my colleagues have, thanking everyone who's worked so hard throughout this snowstorm. Really want to thank the folks at the MBTA who have worked tires tirelessly to not only serve our customers, but keep platforms clear, keep vehicles running, to keep the system safe uh, for the people who absolutely need it. Your, your, your work is recognized and appreciated. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask Acting Director Brantley from MEMA to address us. Thank you. Thank you, General Manager. Um, as you've heard, we're holding our own in this storm, but we still have a few more hours to get through the worst of this. I want to thank, take a moment to thank all of our local emergency management, public safety, and DPD, DPW partners. While we still have more storm ahead of us, the fact that we're doing so well is a testament to the preparation and response planning that happened before the storm. All emergencies are local, and the folks on the front line are doing an amazing job today keeping the community safe, so thank all of you. The state's emergency operations center in Framingham remains activated as are MEMA's regional emergency operations centers in both Tewksbury and Agawam. They will continue to be activated for the duration of the storm to provide a common operating picture and to continue coordinating response operations. The state's EOC is staffed with representatives of several state agencies, including the state police, MassDOT, National Guard, the Department of Public Utilities, Department of Conservation and Recreation, Department of Fire Services, and many other agencies virtually. As we approach the end of the storm and it's the end of its impacts, we are asking residents to continue to monitor the media and follow instructions from public safety officials until this storm is through with us. If the power is out, you may need to go to a warming center or an emergency shelter, so please call your local public safety officials or 211 to find a shelter or a warming center near you. Report power outages to your local utility and if you see downed power lines, please stay away from them. Operate generators safely and at least 20 feet away from your home. Also, take care when you're shoveling near the road. The blowing and drifting snow can make it difficult for plow drivers to see you. And please be careful using your snow blower as well to avoid any injuries while clearing snow from your own property. Clear snow from heating system and exhaust vents, car tailpipes, to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. And again, thank you all. Continue to stay safe. Check in with family, friends, and neighbors who may need additional help as the storm winds down. I'd like to turn it over now to Secretary Theo Harides. Thank you, Don. Good evening. I'd echo the thanks from my colleagues to the various crews who are out on the front lines of the snowstorm working overnight and into the evening on our end to our Department of Conservation and Recreation to our Department of Public Utilities and to the utility crews who are out working under some very difficult conditions and to all of our very competent municipal partners who have really stepped up in this storm. With snowfall and high winds expected to continue into the evening, additional power outages may occur throughout the night. As the Governor said, at this time there are over 100,000 outages um, and customers oh. statewide without power. We have power outages heavily concentrated in eastern Massachusetts along the South Shore, Cape Cod, and the islands. The high winds and snowfall across the Commonwealth have created challenging travel and working conditions for the utility company's crews, but the companies have pre-staged and prepared for these conditions and are pre-staged now in the most impacted areas, particularly the Cape and Islands, and by securing additional crews to assist in repairing damage to the electric system and restoring customer outages. The good news is our neighboring states don't have the outages we have, and so the companies are able to bring full resources to bear to Massachusetts. When the winds begin to subside this evening, the utility companies will uh, really push into assessment and restoration efforts and get a full sense of the damage, and this assessment phase will give a more accurate picture of the full extent and the timeline for restoration. The companies will also be able to assess whether to shift crew resources from less impacted areas of the state and nearby states as I mentioned, to the most significantly impacted areas. That work is already going on, and you'll hear uh, from Joe Nolan from Eversource on those, on those efforts in a moment. 
In locations where it's not yet safe to work, crews are patrolling the area to conduct additional damage assessments while we wait for the winds to subside. And once those winds go down to 35 miles an hour, crews will be able to utilize their bucket trucks and focus on power restoration efforts and move quickly through the day tomorrow to get the power back on. We ask all those who, ex who are experiencing a power outage to remain safe and take proper precautions. Don mentioned some of these. Because of the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning, don't use generators, grills, camp, stones, camp stoves, or other gasoline or charcoal burning equipment inside your home, basement, garage, or near a window. Additionally, folks should make sure to take proper precautions with wood stoves, fireplaces, space heaters, and even candles in order to prevent a house fire. Please put anything out before you go to bed. If you come across a downed power line, assume it's a live wire and don't go near it. And please report all downed power lines to your local police and fire departments. On the DCR side, currently a parking ban remains in place throughout the state park system. The Department of Conservation and Recreation is continuing to follow our municipal partner's snow emergency declarations in terms of what's closed down and the agency is planning for parking bans along parkways to remain in effect until shortly after the snow and ice operations have been completed. Some of our coastal parkways have experienced roadway flooding during the storm, particularly during the high tide cycles. And while our parkways do remain largely open and passable for vehicle traffic, we do encourage motorists to stay off the road unless you absolutely must travel. Additionally, DCR has closed all coastal parking lots to enable snow and ice removal at other priority locations. We do expect that cleanup efforts will take some time, and we thank you for your patience. And again, thank you to all the crews across the state who are working on this storm. Now I'll turn it over to Joe Nolan from Eversource. Thank you, Madam Secretary, Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito. Uh, on behalf of Eversource, uh, we have uh, 9,300 employees. Uh, we have roughly 100,000 customers without power at this time. Uh, we have mobilized one of the largest uh, forces down in Cape Cod. Uh, we have joint based Cape Cod is being utilized as well as three or four other staging areas. Uh, tonight we'll house roughly 3,000 folks on Cape Cod, 16,000 meals. Uh, right now conditions are very difficult to get the buckets up in the air. Uh, we do have eyes on all of these outages uh, and I will tell you that as soon as it is safe, uh, the men and women of Eversource and our partners that were brought in, I will tell you, they've come as far as uh, from Southern California, from Canada, Michigan, Florida, uh, have come up here to aid uh, Eversource and its customers. Uh, we have just actually released crews out of Connecticut and New Hampshire that have come as well. They're on their way to Southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, and I want to let all our customers know that, uh, that help is on the ground already and that we will get power back just as quickly and safely as possible. And, I'm very, very grateful for their patience. So thank you. Do you have any questions? Okay, folks, stay safe. If you can stay inside, stay inside. But most importantly, thank you very much for uh, giving all of the folks who are associated with our organizations uh, a chance to get a lot of work done today as the storm was uh, it was particularly intense, exactly what we thought it would be, and as a result, we're in much better shape than we would have been otherwise. So thank you. Thank you, Rob. Take this to the right, Yeah, that was easy, right? <laughs> it's easy when nobody...